Welcome to the Creators here at Sun City. Coming to you every Tuesday and Friday. Extended conversations that build community making for creators videos, by art, making what you make. Today on The Creators, Dua Zara, a powerful figurative painter of works inspired by the natural world, where she finds herself today in the northeastern United States, all the more so after a childhood of chaos and bombs in wartime Baghdad, Iraq. So subscribe to our channel, comment, and most importantly, watch Building With Us as we build community with you. Hi folks, welcome back to The Creators. Uh, we are coming to you as usual from beautiful downtown Summersworth in the Sum City Studios. With us today, our creator uh, is uh, an artist extraordinaire uh, by the name of Dua Zahra. So Dua, welcome to The Creators. Thank you, thanks for having me. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure and having seen uh, much of your artwork, uh, at least what you have posted online, uh, it's a pleasure uh, for me to, to welcome you because I have to say um, you really create some stunning paintings and, and artwork. Thank you, appreciate that, yeah. Um, so tell us a little if you would about uh, you know, what kind of inspired you to, to go in the direction of creating art uh, and maybe a little about influences early on? No, definitely that is a valid question. How did we get here and why do we want to continue to make art? Um, for me, it started on when I was really young, you know. Um, it's almost as if art was the first thing that I've remembered and was familiar with um, as a process. And um, the visual aspect of it is what spoke to me. You know, there are certain things that we can't really communicate via words. Um, and through visuals, there is so much that can be portrayed um, that speaks to the emotion, to the valid emotion of human experience. Um, so for me, you know, it's, it's, it's the journey of me being on this life and um, wanting to continue something that revolves and shows the self and exposes the consciousness. Um, you know, influences were nature, um, but at the same time were war, because I grew up in, in Baghdad, Iraq, and I was born th into a war and lived through a war in 2003. Um, and at that time, I was 10 years old. Um, so the painting aspect gave me freedom and power and connection. Um, and it also gave me meditation, you know, to, to be able to look at my object and um, learn about it and discover it. And in that process, I'm discovering myself and why I'm making the choices I'm making on, on paper, on canvas, um, or sometimes even on words, you know, or in words, you know, writing poetry and, and exploring that as well onto my canvas. I've made some pieces where I've painted poems, you know. Um, so it's, it's a complicated process, but it's just the process of discovery, discovering the self and supporting um, the idea of individuality and bringing something for, uh, from inside out, you know. Well, I want to talk a little bit about a little bit more about you know visual communication uh, in general, but first you mentioned that you're originally from uh, uh, Baghdad, Iraq, mm -hmm. and uh, I think that I've mentioned to you that uh, I have actually spent a little bit of time there. Um, you know, I was there in, in uh, 2000 twice, uh, actually, with a group called Voices in the Wilderness, um, and we were trying to raise awareness back here in the states about the economic sanctions which were doing a lot of harm as of course you're well aware uh, to the Iraqi civilian population and so uh, the, that there's a little added um, feeling of amazement that now I, I'm sitting here with someone who was uh, Let's see, so you would have been seven years old in 2000? Is that yeah, right? yeah, about. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, there in Iraq. Um, I do, was, you, yeah. do you have any 
memories from from then? And if you absolutely. do, I mean, will you, yeah, do you mind talking about no, them? Absolutely. I mean, my first memory was or connection with art was actually pre-war. Um, you know, I just enjoyed um, the silence of the process and painting or drawing something and, and displaying it and the, seeing the enjoyment of family or friends who see that and appreciate it. Um, but I grew further into my art practice when the war happened in 2003. Um, because it was then, you know, a language for me to discover um, and to talk about and develop um, a way of bringing peace into the world or bringing more healing into the world by discovering the self and honoring that experience. So I absolutely remember Baghdad, Iraq, going from a normal country in a sense, you know, yes, it was under a dictatorship, but um, there wasn't so much violence and kind of in front of people's faces and especially in a sense, you know, kids um, and younger generations. So I was exposed to a lot of that, unfortunately, and there are many people out there who have seen worse, you know, and have lost loved ones and um, truly had shattering moments. I was lucky. I feel like I was privileged to have my family um, all in whole um, throughout the war. I think we've lived there for four years before deciding that this was not safe and we needed to um, escape. Um, and so, you know, then comes the journey of letting go, you know, letting go of the idea of country and the idea of um, nationality. And, you know, really, what, it, what does all of that come down to? You know, it's all coming down yeah. to the human experience because in vulnerable moments like these, you really know what's at stake and you know what, what structures are real and what structures are... Um, drawn upon us, you know, or put upon us. Yeah. And the sort of inevitable, I mean, it's difficult for a lot of people to leave home even under good circumstances, but then to have to leave your home under, you know, such stressful, I mean, stressful is an understatement, mm -hmm. uh, under those kind of circumstances has to really add to that sort of anxiety of having to go away from what's familiar to you. Yes, absolutely. The unknown, putting yourself in in the most uncomfortable situation, you know, yeah. and also being open, being completely open to what experience that may come next, um, you know, and for me, like I said, I've been super privileged to have my family all well and alive and to be able to um, have art to return to, you know, and, and um, use as a tool of truly healing, you know, um, healing trauma, healing and expressing years worth of um, suppression, you know, cultural suppression or religious suppression. Um, so it is really just powerful, powerful tool to um, grow with. Yeah. Going back to your mention of uh, sort of deep appreciation of, of visuals and visual communication um, and visual expression. Are there particular uh, either artists or photographers or filmmakers or uh, you know, any particular individuals who you felt have really inspired you? Yeah, absolutely. So growing up in Iraq, I unfortunately didn't have the chance to really go to museums. Actually, the first museum I have ever been to is the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, and that's where I went to school. Um, but before that, throughout my childhood, I just had a dic dictionary with Renaissance art and artists in the back of it, and that was my museum. That was my inspiration and kind of first um, exposure to what was aesthetically beautiful and powerful. So I'm deeply inspired by that just because it's kind of my first memory into the painting world um, that wasn't mine. And um, currently one of my favorite artists are um, Roberto Ferri, who is an Italian painter, contemporary painter. Um, and, you know, just being inspired also by 
the ex nature, you know, because for me, um, I grew up with a lot of destruction and war and um, scenes that were mostly presented by uh, the human nature, you know. So for me to take time off of that and look deep into nature and be out in the in, in the forest or hike or water, you know, these are all scenes that are new to me. Uh, and for me, that was really the, tr the best inspiration I've had um, growing up and coming here. A phrase that you used describes, at least in terms of the paintings that you've done that I've seen, that phrase, uh, an, an aesthetic of, of beauty and power. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. if you're gonna boil it down to a few words, I think that describes your paintings <laughs> Thank quite you. well. Absolutely, I'm I'm all about really just empowering the female in particular and being the female gaze into the divine feminine energy that we have here um, from, you know, us to the planet and whole to how nature works. So empowering that female to me that has been suppressed culturally um, and throughout my work, I really use it as a tool to heal. You know, I look at my ancestral lineage and see what lessons that have been presented there, you know, and how do I empower them and connect them in my own individual experience and what I've gathered along the way. So empowering, but also not using, you know, or representing violence again, because we've seen and we have so much of that. So for me is quite the opposite is to bring beauty out forth and to remind people that there is truly beauty in every situation, even even the toughest, even war, you can find a deep lesson in that and and pass it along. Can we talk a little bit about your process? You know, every artist has, uh, some are extremely disciplined, you mm -hmm. know, making themselves go to work at such and such a time every morning or, or whatever, and others, uh, you know, the, the other side of the spectrum, I suppose, is, you know, just whenever inspiration hits, if it, if it does. Uh, tell us about your, your artistic process. Yeah, my artistic process is very open. I usually don't have, I know a lot of artists have, you know, a visual or a sketch that they work from and they follow through. Um, so they stick with the idea originally. For me, my process is quite different. I, I let the object or subject reveal itself to me and I change a lot throughout my painting. I take things off or I bring things forward and then cover them. So there's a lot of room for actual self-discovery outside or in between and those playful moments. Um, and the final result is always just you know, a, a lesson or, or something that I've learned um, about myself that I didn't know when I started the painting. Um, I work with mostly figurative um, skin, bodies, portraits. Um, those to me are subject of interest because they show they're a landscape of, of truth and divinity, you know, and um, to me it's, it's power and um, using that as a tool to self-discover and express. Um, I go to work from 9 to 5 or 8 to 5 sometimes. Um, and it's the dedication to come home, you know, I go to the gym or make sure I actually atten attend to my body and then the night time is usually where I go to the studio and spend some time cultivating ideas, um, working on that painting, um, and spending a lot of time thinking about what I want to portray. So I would say 70% of the time is really just thinking and painting visually, and then the rest is to put actually in action and let it reveal itself. Do you have a, a studio locally in Seacoast, New Hampshire? Yeah, I actually work um, off Rye in New Hampshire at the moment. I have a beautiful um, little studio and I've been working on canvases that are my biggest so far, you know, biggest in size yet. So um, exploring a lot of new things and 
combining a lot of new ideas that I've had. Um, That's a nice location. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Right. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So. Do you have much of a sense of uh, sort of community among artists uh, here in this area at, at this point, or is that something that maybe still is in process? It is definitely in process. It's you know I've been. Um, I'm new to the area, so for me to find artists and be out there and seek local events has not been, um, you know, at the top of my list, mainly because the work I've been making is, or the, the work that I've had has been sold, so my issue is really making more work, you know, and then bringing that work out and meeting um, local artists and having the conversation or the critique. Um, together, you know, so at the moment I'm focused on actually putting time into my studio and making work, um, and I'm hopeful by next year, you know, I'll be able to make an, an exhibit with other artists that I share the same idea with or concept or philosophy and, you know, have that conversation out in the public and into the community and start talking about it. Yeah. Well, that's great. Uh, I, I hope uh, uh, to see that happen uh, as well. Yeah. Um, is there a particular, you know, looking at your work, and I know you, you sell quite a bit of it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but is there a particular, maybe one particular painting um, that we could show viewers a, a photo of and maybe a, a, a past work that... Uh, is your personal favorite of the work that you've done uh, for for one reason or another? And can you kind of describe maybe one of your uh, one of your works and what inspired it? Absolutely. So I think the best one I've I'm able to explore is the one I've been working on recently, which is um, a figure of a male and a female uniting and combining together in a beautiful motion um, and above that is the shibibo pattern and the shibibo pattern it has been an incredible tool for me to explore and and put into my work um, if you're not familiar with it it's it's seen or used in in the shamanic um, culture and on the manzonian river so i've been putting that on into the bodies that I've been painting and the figures that I've been painting. And it's inspired by a really dream that I've had of that pattern um, and a meditation and, and was able to see that. So there's an aspect of surrealism as well as um, kind of stepping into this other form that is not necessarily American, not necessarily Iraqi, and does not represent anything, but speaks about the global whole, you know, the female and male and all the polarities coming together and all the cultures coming together, or so that's how I view it and hope to see it. Um, so it's this beautiful union of different things that influence the human consciousness and the human experience. Yeah. I have seen a couple of photos that you've posted out online yeah. uh, as you've been working on it. And again, uh, it's another astonishing work of art. Um, so uh, I, I also want to point out that um, you were actually painting right before you came here for this interview. Yes. And there's a few <laughs> little telltale signs, not on your clothing. I covered in paint. <laughs> on your hands, uh, lovely turquoise on one of your toes there. And uh, um, so do you work every day uh, on your art? Um, I wish. I really wish I can work on my art every day, but it is not sometimes possible. Um, but I would say most of every night I do spend time in the studio. Um, sometimes I need to step out of the studio and take time to mm. rest or really just seek inspiration and think about um, the next steps. But I've had this amazing opportunity to paint a mural in Salem, Massachusetts for the Urban Art Museum. Um, and again, just another opportunity to represent um, 
as an Iraqi art, American artist in Salem, New Hampshire, and have the pleasure of painting on on the wall um, a beautiful goddess, you know, that represents Earth or the element of water. Um, so the exhibit will be on Saturday, um, and there were just amazing artists that I connected with that were there and. That's great. Yeah. And so, so they contacted you and, and commissioned did. you to, yeah. to do this mural? Yep, absolutely. That's and wonderful. that came out of me selling a painting to a friend, and um, through that, they saw the work. And it's just amazing how the world, word tra you know, travels and you get yeah. your art exposure out you know, without even trying sometimes. <laughs> yes, yeah. One thing leads to another, yeah. or one contact leads to another. It's great when that happens. Uh, for our viewers, where can they go, uh, say online, to uh, to see some of your amazing artwork? Yeah, I'm very heavy on Instagram. Um, I do use that platform to showcase my art um, as well as my process. You know, as a, as a human being. So, first last name underscore is really the easiest way to see my art and what I'm working on. Um, but like I mentioned earlier. I, I was so focused the past few years on making art and selling that I didn't think of recording my process or saving photo, photos of that and you know putting into a website. So all of that is really work in progress. Okay, so if they search uh, D U A A underscore Z A H R A, that it's, will. First name, so D U A A Z A H R A underscore. Okay. Oh, then yep. the end. Okay. At the end. <laughs> All right. Um, well, good. Uh, so, uh, any other uh, things related to your artwork that, that you wanted to be sure to talk about while, while the uh, cameras were rolling? Um, yeah, sure. You know, the. I think there is such power as a female artist to paint the female body and specifically coming from a place where the female energy is suppressed and oppressed, you know, um, and is almost not allowed to express herself out in the world and be out there. Um, and Globally, that is a work in progress. I feel like everywhere in the world, um, people are fighting for rights, you know, not just females and women, um, but we have come to a point um, as, as a human race to really ask that question and unite and be um, all equal together and connect that way. So. That is really the main focus in my art and in my work, and to be able to provide that visually so the person or the viewer can can gather and connect to my work um, and relate to that experience. Excellent. So, of course, the name of the show is The Creators, and we often will ask, um, uh, obviously, you're a very creative person, but in terms of that term, a creator, uh, do you consider yourself a creator, and, and what does that term mean to you, if anything? Absolutely. So, yes, I do think about that um, a lot in my work, and to me, the creator is a place of being, is a um, kind of a moment in time where, for example, if I'm working on my painting or on something creative or a project. There is a certain moment, a meditation that comes in where you're not, you're no longer yourself, you're not thinking about your day or your problems, you're just in that blissful moment of creation. And for me, you're, at that moment, um, you realize that you're, you're beyond yourself, you're, you're not just yourself, you're almost the, the whole human experience together. Um, and that's, I think, where true creation happens and getting to that moment. So the, absolutely, I, I am a creator. I think every single one of us is a creator. Um, we're, we don't have to create necessarily a piece of art. You know, we're creating our reality together as people by, by the choices that we make. Um, so it is really a deep term 
and painting on canvas is just another way of bringing forth that, you know, and making a mark and putting it out in the, in the real world for people to view. But absolutely, it's a moment and a place and time that we can all get, get to. Well said. Well, Dua, thank you so much for coming on The Creators uh, to be with us here today. Thank you for having me. Folks, if you uh, uh, enjoy this show, uh, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, and thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Creators.